Some of you might be thinking, why should I take advice from some clown with a broomstick head of hair on how not to lose my hair? Well, let me ask you this. Would you take advice on how to lose weight from a fat person? No. So, why not take advice from someone with a lot of hair on how not to lose your hair? And, although this is being a little bit silly, I will say that my father is pretty much completely bald, I guess as bald as you can get. And my brother definitely does not have as full of a head of hair as I do. So I can safely say there is either something different I am doing in my diet or, I mean, I'm not led to believe I'm genetically different from my brother because we are triplets. Most people are familiar with hormonal imbalances causing hair loss. Now, it can also be caused by anemia, protein deficiency, as well as thyroid imbalance. One thing I can say for certain is that our indigenous ancestors were free from balding. It's interesting that you've never really seen a picture of a bald Native American, nor have you seen a picture of a bald Aborigine, the natives to Australia. Most men suffering from hair loss, after doing a little bit of research, understand that the hair follicle sensitivity to DHT is the problem. What I can say is if the parents had optimal nutrition during conception, if the mother had proper nutrition during pregnancy, nursing period, if the child grew up with enough nutrition in their diet, I would have the utmost confidence that their hormone levels are proper and balanced and that they would not lose their hair. As people with high testosterone versus people with low testosterone can still lose their hair. There is just a genetic sensitivity of the hair follicles to DHT. What makes the most sense to me is possibly your body needs nutrition for other aspects considering how nutrient depleted our current diets are. Unfortunately, most people don't get adequate nutrition, let alone optimal nutrition. Now, does that really have an effect on hair loss? Some of our ancestors thought so. Here is a clip of Bushman hunters in the Kalahari. The hunter can drink the blood. When the meat is so small, this is all he can have. Why should he get more? There are many to feed. Of course, if he ate more meat, his hair might grow stronger. All of these indigenous groups had incredibly high nutrient density from animal foods in the diet. So if we replicate this as well as replicate possibly their lifestyle of being in the sun, getting adequate vitamin D3 exposure, in addition to exercising, it's safe to say there is nothing else we can be done from a nutrition standpoint in order to prevent hair loss. I read a lot about people on the keto diet, on the zero carb diet, switching over and experiencing hair loss, but all of my clients and the people I've guided through transitioning didn't seem to have that problem. So through my anecdotes, and my understanding, there is definitely some missing element to keto and zero carb diets compared to what I do, whether it's vitamin D3, the increased nutrient density of vitamins A and K2 in the diet. I believe one of those definitely prevents hair loss to some degree. There's definitely some sort of mechanism involved. So if you do have adequate nutrient density in the diet, if you are getting your vitamin D3 and water from a proper source, it's safe to say there's nothing else you can really do. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and if you would like to support me, share the video. Uh, if you want, check out my Patreon. By supporting me on Patreon, you are helping me continue to pump out one video a day. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. If you guys would like, check out my Amazon shop. And if you would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, maybe prevent a few follicles here and there from leaving your head, you can reach out to me frankatofano at gmail.com or send me a message through the website below in the description.